after a well-deserved week off, the UConn Huskies are back at it. Welcome to the penultimate edition of the Blitz before UConn's home finale against the Cougars of Houston. Hi, I'm Jody Ambrosio, the radio voice of the Huskies, here with the head coach, Bob Diaco, yeah. looking well-rested, as you always do. No, this no. buy came at the right time of the year, week of the year for everybody. It did. It did. It was, it was much needed. Um, you know, very physical camp. Over three weeks of, of intense, really not much day off, you know, just really During good the after heat of it. summer, we forget. And, and then right into 10 weeks. And those 10 weeks were battles. You know, that's the other thing. Right. You know, not that a game is any less or more than another game, but they were so physically and emotionally taxing. Every game was a fourth quarter battle. Um, that that the team was really ready for a little break. I know you talked, Bob, that one of the things you wanted to do during the bye week was maybe give a little more love, shall we say, to the to the look squad players, yeah. the true freshmen uh, who we don't see on Saturdays, but who we'll see for the next three or four years. What was that like for them? It was great. We we each practice had uh, you know very intense work, and we had a chance to learn a lot about them, and, and they learned about themselves, uh, and then some great video to coach off of. Uh, where they haven't necessarily had a chance to watch themselves right. and get coached. Now we had we had a, a two days worth of footage to to show them and coach off of. It was a great moment. Now this Saturday is Senior Day. Twelve players who have uh, spent the last four or five years in national flag blue and white will be honored prior to the game and then go out and play against the nationally ranked team. When you look at this group of seniors who you've had for two and a half years mm -hmm. since you first took the job, what stands out for you about this group of young men? Uh, perseverance, persistence. Um, it's a it's a very um, coachable and malleable group. There's no real obstinance in them. They're just they want to help. They want to be good. Their receptors are open to. Hey, just tell me what you want me to do. Just show me the way. Um, and that's so awesome. And it's and, a group of kids who wanted to be on the ground floor of what you were doing here. No, they're, they're, they're just fantastic. I have no nothing to say other than superlatives. Um, and they're a huge energizer for me. Um, they've gotten my best, and they're going to get my best. Right. And, and, and I'm going to try to find uh, some little bit extra that I can do to help them achieve. And, and I think everyone, all their brothers feel the same way. It's an exciting week at the Burton Family Football Complex because with two weeks to go in the season, you have two meaningful games to play. Yeah, absolutely. That is the next step that we've taken with our program. You're wondering where we're at with our program? Well, if you're flying at 40,000 feet, you can look and say, we're having a meaningful conversation in November about right. football games. We've taken the next step. No question about it. And that step comes against the 13th ranked team in the country, Houston, who staged an impressive comeback at home on Saturday night to beat Memphis. This is a, a Houston team that clicks on all levels. Oh, yeah. They're, they're a great team. They're undefeated for a reason. Um, they're a top 15 team in the country for a reason. Uh, but that's exciting for us. I mean, we couldn't wrote the script any better. Right. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm hoping they're at complete full strength, every one of their players is here, and that they're on fire for their work. Um, I'm looking forward to competing against Houston, and I know our football family is the same way. The rest of our teammates are the same in that we're looking forward to playing uh, them, whole heart, whole mind, whole body, uh, um, in our final uh, home game, Senior Day for 2015. And this is why these players came here, to play in games like this, against competition like this. Absolutely. Let's go. All right. Coach said let's go, so let's go. Thanks. Let's Good go. luck. Thank you. Time now for our player profile, and we are delighted to welcome in old number 62, the big left guard out of Hawthorne, New York, Tommy Hopkins. Now, we've had Samra on. We've had uh, Kanapi on. Can you do better than they did on the show? I'll try. All right, I'm sure you will. What's this been like for you? Your first year as a full-time starter, uh, offensive line has gotten steadily better as the years gone gone on. Uh, talk about your own performance, Tommy, and the performance of the O line as a group. I mean, it's been fun so far. I think we're doing uh, we're doing all right overall, but we still got some things to work on. So, yeah. What kind of things individually do you think you can get better at? You know, just some little things. You know, sometimes you know, staying lower sometimes. Sometimes hand placement, footwork. What's the toughest thing about playing offensive guard at the at the FBS level? Mentally, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you need to know, so you really got to be up on it. Now, you play between Richard Levy and uh, Brendan Veshery, the center. 
What's that dynamic like with you three? No, it's good. I think we uh, know each other well, kind of know, you know what we want to do in different situations. Have you always been an offensive lineman? Now, we had Myers on earlier in the year. Mike Myers said in Pop Warner, he was a running back. We've had other offensive linemen talk about their pass catching skills. Have you always been a, been an O-lineman? Yeah, I mean, I play D-line, so. so. Which did you like better? O-line. Yeah, you don't mind, so you'd rather hit somebody, you'd rather hit somebody than tackle somebody. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're both fun, but yeah. All right, now before we do our segment, which we do with all the players, three and out, I have to quiz you on this. We had Tommy Myers in here a couple of weeks ago, and we had a couple of guys on our radio coaches show um, who described your eating habits as a human garbage disposal, that you were a pretty healthy eater. Do you have a response for that? It's true. I mean, I eat a lot. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's do three and out where we kind of step off the field and ask you a couple of questions. Which actor would you like to have play you, play Tommy Hopkins in the Tommy Hopkins story? I don't know. That's tough. Any actor ever? Brad Pitt? Yeah, Brad. Yeah, anybody. Anybody. So I'll say, uh, I don't know, maybe I like Arnold. Maybe in his Arnold part. Schwarzenegger. He's a little more muscular. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. That's a good one. Um, if on a dare we could get you to sing karaoke, and we're not asking you to do that now, what song would you sing? Uh, maybe Living on a Prayer. Really? That's a song everyone likes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's the first thing you would do if you hit the lottery? You have millions of dollars to spend. What would you, what would you spend on a... Probably dinner. I really don't know. <laughs> That's a pretty big dinner. Maybe order some food. <laughs> uh, which one of your teammates? Let's, in fact, let's narrow this down. Which one of the offensive linemen, starters, reserves, which do you think is more, most likely to end up in a boy band? I don't know, maybe uh, Steve Fashami. Steve Fashami? Maybe. Backup yeah. offensive lineman? Does he sing in the locker room? Is that, or is he going to have boy mm -hmm. band habits? I don't know, he's a character. Okay. Maybe Rich. Uh, maybe Rich Levy? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. saying something. Okay, that would Probably be good. Rich, yeah. uh, Which one of your teammates has the best hidden talent that those of us on the outside don't know about? And what is it? Somebody do magic, somebody sing, somebody act, somebody do impressions of the coach? Um, I don't know. It's a tough one. Yeah? All right. Well, we well Tommy pick... Myers, he does, he does great impressions. Who does he do best? He does some family guy, he does Coach Dieppa. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, and if you could pick one teammate to be stranded on a desert island with, who would it be? That's tough. I think uh, maybe Andreas, you know, is archery, right? He Hunts could some animals kill you the food. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Tommy Hopkins, number 62, offensive lineman. Tommy, thanks. Good luck this well, week. Thank you. The UConn football team is taken to the rent for the final time this season this Saturday, and we're taking to Fairfield Way today to find out how much these students know about our last home opponent. Who is UConn football playing this week? Houston. Houston. They're playing Houston. Houston. What is Houston's mascot? The Cougars. They are the Cougars. Pretty sure they're the Cougars. The older women who like younger men. Cougar is correct. All right, a famous play-by-play -play commentator, Thursday Night Football, CBS Sunday Football, the Masters, the list goes on. Went to the University of Houston. Do you know his name? Uh, Jim Nance. Jim Nance. I think it's Jim Nance. Uh, Jim Nance. Houston is home to a professional team in almost every sport except the NHL. Can you name three of those teams? The Rockets. Uh, the Rockets. Rockets. The Texans. 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 Oh, Cowboys. Now that's Dallas. The Falcons. And the Astros. The Astros. Uh, on the Houston Astros is a famous UConn alum. Play baseball right here in stores. Do you know his name? Um, I believe it was Springer. George Springer. George Springer. George Springer? Absolutely it is, George Springer. You know your stuff, clearly. UConn football has taken on Houston this Saturday at 3.30 for our senior day. If they win this one, they're bowl eligible. Who do you think is going to win? The Huskies. We are. UConn, of course. Us, obviously. Boom! And he's off. Amazing. Goodbye. Thank you. And as always, we wrap up the Blitz going inside the press box with my friend Gavin Keefe, who covers both football and men's basketball for the New London Day. So if we had said to you before the opening game that in week 11, UConn would be playing a meaningful game, what would your thoughts have been then? 
I think I would have been surprised. I thought maybe they'd get close, just not quite get there. So they definitely made a big improvement from last year, only two wins, and now they're close to being bowl eligible, one win. I think they've gone further than I think we thought they would. Of all the things that have gone well this year, Gavin, what has impressed you the most? I think the defense has been particularly strong. I mean, the offense has is, is not made the mistakes, and they're not as explosive, obviously, but the defense has consistently been an active defense. They're creating turnovers. They're, they're making key stops on third down. So I think that's probably been the, the biggest uh, thing I've seen. And the star of the defense in recent weeks has been the cornerback. Jamar Summers had the pick six. Uh, in the win against Tulane, has six interceptions on the season, and has really provided to be a good complement opposite Javon Williams at that other corner. Yeah, you're, uh, you're right, Joe. I mean, I mean, when defenses start winning games for you, I know you've come a long way. And he's really had a nose for the football. I mean, he's 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 had key interceptions to it, and and to win a game with an interception is is about the best you can do. I also think the outside linebackers. I know Luke Arizona is kind of a hybrid, but I think him. Graham Stewart has easily played his best football at UConn, and the backups, Cam Stapleton, uh, ha have all played really well and have kind of strengthened that front seven on the defense. You know what it is, Joe? You notice them on the field. Right. I mean, they're active. They're in the backfield. You, like you said, they've created some depth this year. He's rotating guys in and all this. Nothing he's done this year has really built some depth, and I think because some of those young players got experience last year, and that's really helped him to, as a springboard for this year. And I think, obviously, on offense, the development of Arkell Newsom has been critical among the conference leaders, not just in rushing, but in all-purpose yardage, and really living up to the hype coming out of Ansonia High School. Yeah, they really found different ways to use them. I mean, special teams, getting the ball out of, you know, as a receiver, and he's, he's, he's making the plays between the tackles now. He's, he's stronger. He's, he's finding, they're finding a way to use, utilize his speed this year. They come into the final two games against two of the best teams in the American Athletic Conference starting uh, with this game against Houston. Do you think there's any chance the Cougars suffer a letdown after the emotional comeback against Memphis? I mean, it's possible, but there's a lot at stake for them, too. I mean, they're undefeated. They've got Navy next week, so they have people saying, well, there's a trap game for them. But it, this is still a big game for them. I mean, if they want to keep climbing up. They want to keep the momentum. They lost their quarterback last week, Ward. They, uh, uh, Coach Yaka was saying he expects him to play, but the backup came in and they, they rallied from 20 down to beat Memphis, so it, they haven't really lost a beat. So I think they really think they've got something special going on. Coach Yaka talked about the belief they have in themselves, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's going to be a letdown. All right, Gavin Keefe, you can read him on the London Day or follow him on Twitter. Gavin, thanks. Thanks, Joe. All right, so that'll do it for this edition of The Blitz. Don't forget the game is on at 3.30 uh, on a Saturday afternoon, and you can watch it on ESPNU. And, of course, if you can't watch it on TV, you can listen to it on the UConn IMG Sports Network beginning at 2 o'clock. Now, for Gavin, for Tommy Hopkins, Coach Bob Diaco, and America's number one video crew for the 11th week in a row, <laughs> UConn Video, I'm Joe D'Ambrosio. Thanks for watching The Blitz.